Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Um, you are here at the Great American Downtown Annual Meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, I just hoofed it up from downstairs. Uh, we just had our board meeting in room 208. Uh, so let me catch my breath. All right, so uh, Great American Downtown, uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit here in the city. Uh, we are uh, Nashua-based. We solely operate in Nashua. Uh, we work on vibrancy programs. Um, I have a video for you. Uh, it is our uh, 2017 recap, uh, so we'll get that started right now. Oh. 
So as you can see, we've been very busy this past year, uh, and we've had a fantastic year in downtown Nashua. Uh, a lot to be proud of, uh, not just as Great American Downtown, but as a community. Uh, so thank you all for, um, for what you've done to be a part of that. All right, and before we uh, carry on any further, I'd like to recognize our aldermen uh, for coming out tonight. So thank you to uh, Alderman Wilshire, uh, Laws, uh, Clee, Dowd, Gathright, Lopez, Schmidt, um, uh, Shoshana Kelly, Marion Malizi Goya, and Brian McCarthy. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. All right, so we are uh, downtown Nashville. We are Great American Downtown. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit uh, that promotes economic and cultural vibrancy in downtown Nashua uh, through creative marketing and great community events. Uh, our mission uh, is a uh, nonprofit whose purpose is to provide coordination, collaboration, and partnerships that unify the entire Nashua community around a common vision for an attractive downtown that is vibrant, viable, and truly enhance, uh, reflects the character of our city. Uh, we are funded uh, through a variety of mechanisms. Uh, one of them is through the City of Nashua. Uh, each year we receive an annual allocation that supports our general budget. Uh, we also, uh, from time to time, uh, receive event or program specific support. Uh, from the uh, City of Nashua uh, by way of uh, the budget and also by way of the Downtown Improvement Committee. Uh, the Downtown Improvement Committee, for example, supported uh, the New Muse Festival this past year um, as well as the Holiday Stroll. So thank you to, um, uh, to uh, Mary Lou and her committee uh, for all the work that they do to, to make our downtown great. Um, we are also supported by sponsors. Uh, in 2017, we had over 50 sponsors across a wide variety of programs. Uh, we also have event income, uh, so we do the Taste of Downtown, and I hope you'll join us for that this year. Uh, we have about 800 people that come out to try food from uh, over uh, 30 restaurants uh, that are located here in downtown Nashua. Um, and that, that event, as well as the dinner on Main Street, uh, help our budget along a good bit. Uh, we also uh, have individual contributions, um, and uh, it, it's not listed here, uh, but we've done a good bit uh, to work on receiving grants, uh, both from uh, uh, organizations that, that do grants as well as the federal government. Uh, a lot of the expansion of our farmer's market uh, has been made possible to a significant extent uh, in partnership with the NRPC uh, through a farmer's market promotion plan grant uh, from the USDA specifically. Uh, if you'd like to uh, support Great American Downtown, you can do so uh, as a one-time donation um, or as a monthly contributor uh, at downtownnashua.org slash donate. Uh, thanks to a partnership with the United Way, uh, we have a payment-free um, uh, processing platform uh, that's located at that site. Um, so we do not get hit for the credit card fees when you donate there, uh, which is a nice thing for us because those do add up. Um, we are led by a fantastic board of directors, um, Cheryl Lindner, uh, our board president. Uh, if you guys, if, do you want to stand up? Yeah, why don't you stand up? Um, so we'll recognize our, our board of directors, uh, Cheryl Lindner, uh, who's our board president, uh, Chelsea Dennis from Bellavance Beverage is our vice president, Laura Galbo from National Coin and Collectibles is our second vice president, uh, Ryan Ruggiero. Uh, from Triangle Credit Union uh, is our treasurer, Carrie Gleason from The Nature of Things, and very soon the Rambling House, which will open downtown, uh, is our secretary. Uh, Deputy Chief Glenn McDonald uh, is our designee of the fire chief. Sergeant Carrie Baxter is our designee from the police chief. Uh, Tim Cummings, economic development director, is the designee from the mayor's office. Uh, Mary Lou Blaisdell of Design Wares. Uh, Deb Rapsis from Pesciello Marketing Group. Uh, Carol Iman from the Nashua Public Library, Carrie G 
Gleason uh, is on here twice. Hi, Carrie. Uh, <laughs> uh, Alderman Tom Lopez. Uh, James Veo is the downtown specialist in the Economic Development Department. Um, and Steve Sachs from Alpha Graphics. If you could please give them a, a round of applause for all the work that they do. Our staff uh, is a four-person team right now. Uh, myself, uh, I'm Paul Shea, Executive Director. Uh, we have Ben Rudock, who's our Arts Coordinator, uh, Carolyn Wally, who's our Marketing Coordinator, and our Marketing Intern, uh, Crystal Lee Cobb. Uh, what have we been known for? Uh, for a good many years, Great American Downtown operated a set of core programs, uh, the Nashua Farmers Market, the Taste of Downtown, um, and the Winter Holiday Stroll. Uh, we have also been known for downtown marketing and uh, general events. Uh, we've done a good bit to grow. Uh, my how we have grown over the past few years. Uh, we have added a number of programs that are new and growing, uh, including the Downtown Scarecrows, uh, the Gate City Community Gardens program, uh, which was adopted by Great American Downtown, uh, Dinner on Main Street, uh, Eat Local Month, uh, in partnership with New Hampshire Eat Local Month in the State Agricultural Department. Uh, the Nashua Farmers Market has grown a significant amount. Uh, we are up to over 35 vendors now and anticipate to continue to grow this coming year. Uh, we've also added uh, the ability to do SNAP EBT in partnership with the NRPC, as well as the New Hampshire Food Bank, uh, who helps support us through the Granite State Market Match Program. So at the Nashua Farmers Market, uh, we are able to match dollar for dollar with that support uh, to people who are SNAP EBT beneficiaries. Um, so for every dollar that they swipe on their card, um, they get two tokens, two dollar tokens uh, for uh, produce, uh, which makes it a good bit uh, more affordable. Uh, the Nashua Street Pianos program, this past year we had a total of three pianos out. Uh, the Nashua Downtown Parks Cleanup Day, which this year, uh, all said and done, had over 400 people at it, which was incredible. Um, thanks to our partnership with the Nashua PAL uh, organization, uh, who also partners with us to produce that event um, and bring in volunteers. Uh, we've also had a hand in working with the city to increase the amount of holiday lighting. Um, we produce an event called Let Freedom Ring. It's a patriotic picnic and sing-along. We usually have about 40 folks uh, that come to Rotary Common, um, and uh, a good number of musicians come out, and we do uh, old classic patriotic songs, like Yankee Doodle Dandy. Uh, we have uh, initiated the New Muse Arts Festival uh, this past year. Uh, we've done Pokemon Go meetups on a regular basis. Uh, that, that game has brought a lot of activity to downtowns so who have worked to stimulate that. Uh, the Celebration of Democracy, uh, which is in partnership uh, with uh, folks and volunteers from our Indian community, um, which is held on the weekend adjacent to Indian Independence Day. Uh, it's a celebration of democracy all over the world um, and features live music. Uh, we had about 400 people at that up at uh, Greeley Park this year, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, the New England Roots Festival, uh, which was initially the fall music festival, uh, but we worked to further define that, and so that event uh, took place uh, this year on Main Street. Uh, so that was our second year working to build that. Um, cultural festivals throughout the year, uh, we have uh, worked to partner with a variety of groups, including Richelieu, uh, to present cultural festivals. Uh, the Chocolate Stroll, uh, I don't know, how many of you were out at the Chocolate Stroll this past week? Small handful of you. The, it was pretty sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Lopez. The, um, the Chocolate Stroll, um, we had such a demand for that event this year that we had to uh, make it a ticketed event. They were free. Uh, but we had uh, nearly 500 people downtown. It was pretty incredible. Um, the chairs to share, uh, which I don't know if you've seen the Adirondack chairs around town, uh, but those are, are something that we put out um, and uh, gives people an opportunity to interact a little more with our green spaces and enjoy and relax in them. Uh, Bollywood on a Blanket, uh, we showed a total of six films um, in Bicentennial Park. And for those of you who don't know where Bicentennial Park is, I cannot blame you, it does not exist on Google. Um, the Bicentennial Park is the tiny pocket park located to, uh, next to the bridge, um, alongside Studio Mark Emil and Daryl's Pianos. Uh, we also uh, produce a newsletter that goes out each week and features uh, over a dozen um, things that are happening downtown, uh, and that is the Downtowner. 
Uh, if you go to downtownnashua.org, uh, you can get a subscription to that. It costs nothing. Can you believe that? It is free. It goes to your inbox every week. And um, so go to downtownnashua.org. About halfway down the page, there's a button to sign up. Um, Speaking of how we have grown, uh, we have grown our audience a good bit over this past year, uh, and, and that's part of our, our overall effort to uh, contact more people and share not just what we do, but a lot of the great things uh, that are happening downtown. There's a whole network of fantastic uh, arts and community and service organizations that, that put things on, as well as the business community uh, with various uh, you know, things to interact with. Um, throughout the year, um, obviously we are not doing 12 things every week, uh, but we are very glad to highlight um, all, all that there is to experience here in Nashua. Um, our Facebook audience has grown over the past year. Uh, when we met uh, last at our annual public meeting, uh, it has grown from 7,080 uh, to 8,737. Uh, we are also, uh, we have a small presence on Twitter and Instagram, so you can follow us there um, at Downtown Nashua. Um, over 2016 and 2017, we have worked a good bit to build our new website. Um, it has a new look. Uh, it has an eat and shop directory, and I'm going to be working with staff and, and volunteers to build out that directory to feature uh, some of our cultural amenities in this coming year. Um, the downtown uh, living, we focus on a uh, lot uh, that there is to do. Uh, downtown is really not just a, a cultural or a commercial district, but it's, it's really a, a, a place where people can enjoy the downtown lifestyle, so we focus on that. Uh, we have a central calendar, uh, which uh, we'll touch on in just a moment. Uh, and we've been working to uh, ramp up our hyper-local blog content. Um, we have at the bottom of our homepage, there's a list of, of three um, recent blogs, and we're going to be increasing that to nine in the coming months uh, so that you can see uh, the increase in content that we've been putting out over the past six months. We'll work to keep that pace up. Uh, there's a lot of great features on there. Uh, including Steve Rudock from Riverwalk Cafe, uh, has been uh, doing microblogs for what we're calling Under the Radar. Uh, it features a lot of the small, uh, hole-in-the-wall, so to speak, eateries uh, that exist downtown. Um, we have uh, over 45 restaurants in our downtown, and uh, not all of them are immediately on Main Street. Uh, there's a lot of gems that are kind of tucked away, um, especially along Canal and, uh, and West Hollis Street. Um, so this is the uh, full month view of our calendar. Um, it features uh, content from over 50 partners. Uh, this is something that folks have been asking for for a while, uh, a central calendar of sorts. And uh, the challenge with that uh, is that when you produce a central calendar, uh, the question is who will maintain it? It can be very exhaustive. Uh, we have worked with our friends at Cleverlight Media, uh, which are located in 30 Temple Street. Uh, to pr put together the website with this calendar feature in a way that aggregates the content. So uh, we are linked in with the Facebook pages and iCalendars and Google calendars for over 50 partners, uh, including uh, community groups and businesses, uh, and all the content is pulled automatically as it's updated into this calendar. So it's a great resource. Uh, we get about 1,400 visits to that uh, each month. So it's something that folks seem to be engaging with. Uh, and we'll work to continue to enhance that. That uh, includes um, a variety of sources. The, in 2017, uh, we grew our programming. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you saw in the video that we showed at the beginning of the meeting uh, was is included here. Uh, the Nashua Street Pianos, uh, we did a total of three pianos this year, and we'll look to uh, do a total of three again this year. That was a success. Uh, thanks to um, North Main Music and Daryl's Pianos for their partnership in making that possible, uh, as well as a, a broad array of sponsors. Uh, the Gate City Community Gardens project, uh, we worked a good bit. Um, speaking of pianos, uh, I'd like to introduce Tracy Lee Carroll, who just walked in. Uh, she did a fantastic job uh, raising funds last year uh, for the piano project in memory of her daughter, Amber. And, uh, her her mother, uh, Marin, uh, painted a beautiful piano. So let's give Tracy a big round of applause. Thank you for coming. 
Um, the Gate City Community Gardens project, uh, we added 12 additional garden beds this year, uh, which is exciting to see that grow. Uh, it's a total of 24 beds, um, and we will look to continue. Uh, we uh, were approved for an extension of the lease for that space. Uh, thanks to the Board of Aldermen and the City of Nashua, uh, we have more space to grow in, uh, and we will look to do that. Um, the Nashua Pride Downtown Parks Cleanup Day, as I mentioned, the turnout was tremendous. Uh, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of folks uh, from uh, Comcast and BAE and Riviere, uh, farm product development, and a uh, whole bunch of just individual volunteers. And uh, Mustak, are you here? Mustak came out with, with uh, his uh, young men from the Rohingya community, and they did a fantastic job. Um, we had over 400 people. We were able to expand our uh, cleanup area to not just the rail trail, uh, but to also cover library grounds, uh, the grounds of the Court Street Theater, um, as well as the uh, Riverwalk, um, and um, some uh, pocket parks in our neighborhoods, including the Salem Street Tot Lot um, and the Shattuck Street Tot Lot. Uh, the Nashua Farmers Market, as I mentioned earlier, uh, has grown a good bit. Uh, we added um, several vendors, uh, including Miles Smith Farm. Uh, we're going to look to continue to grow that this year. Uh, we have a goal of bringing in some product categories that we did not previously have covered, uh, including bread. Uh, we may get some beer vendors at the market, which is a new thing that the state of New Hampshire has uh, allowed um, as of uh, about a year ago. Um, and a, a variety of other product categories. So we'll keep working on building that. Uh, people are really enjoying the Nashua Farmers Market, and um, so we'll, we'll keep up the good work on the Farmers Market. Uh, chocolate Stroll, as I mentioned earlier, unbelievable attendance. Um, I think a lot of the businesses were out of chocolate a short while before the event was due to end, so that was a good sign. So for 2018, uh, we're going to look to continue to grow our music festival series. Um, so this past year, we conducted the New Muse Festival. Uh, we also put on the New England Roots Festival. Uh, those events are geared towards uh, folks in the 25 to 35 area and then uh, 35 and up uh, for the bluegrass and, uh, and uh, uh, country and, and Americana music. Uh, this event is geared towards uh, driving uh, youth music culture in the region. Um, and so we will have a battle of the bands. Uh, applicants will come from the geographic uh, Merrimack Valley, which stretches from Concord, New Hampshire, out through Haverhill and to the seacoast. Um, and we will have an online voting round, uh, which will reduce the total number of applicants to 18. Uh, and then finalists will compete for an album recording um, as well as the cost to list their album on Spotify and iTunes um, on July 21st, 2018. So save the date for that. Um, I don't know if a lot of you, when you came in, there's a, uh, a bright green uh, slip that was at the sign-in table. I see you have one. And um, so that's a, a number of dates for events that we do, as well as events that we partner uh, to, to make happen. So if you did not get one, make sure to grab one on the way out. Um, so what's really exciting about that is there will be not only a music festival, but at the end of it, uh, the uh, the uh, execution of an original piece of artwork, so that's exciting. Uh, community theater, uh, this past year uh, we produced The Last Five Years, uh, which is a piece of musical theater, um, and we had over 450 people who joined us. So if you came to that, thank you for supporting um, that initiative. That was the first time that we've done a theater production, um, and, and it worked out really well, and, and people really seemed to enjoy it. Um, Matt and Kelsey, uh, were the actor and actress in that piece, and they did a fantastic job um, with that. Um, we are going to be working on a process for uh, receiving and approving applications for one community theater piece this year. Um, the uh, success that we had uh, led us to uh, feel like this is something that we should explore and see if we can support uh, more folks in the community. Um, to bring uh, their dream for a production to the stage. Um, this, uh, this past year, uh, Matt and Kelsey had come to us. They said, you know, we really want to produce this. It's a two-person show, though, and so it doesn't really fit the model for what a lot of the community theater groups are doing. 
uh, which, which tend to involve larger casts. Uh, and so we're happy to support them, and we want to make uh, that uh, opportunity possible for more people um, in this coming year. So keep an eye out on our newsletter and our website uh, for information uh, come April on the application process for that. Um, some folks are going over the edge. Um, the uh, United Way uh, has a fundraising initiative that they call Over the Edge, and we are grateful for their partnership. Uh, we will have six board and staff members and volunteers going over the edge. Uh, Lori, are you here? Lori's going over the edge. Uh, Carolyn Wally's going over the edge. Anybody else? Chelsea? Are you, Chelsea's going over the edge. Uh, I am not going over the edge. I am terrified of heights. Uh, heights and uh, ticks are my two fears, in case you wanted to really get to me. So uh, it's good to know. But um, they, they are very brave. Uh, they will be rappelling off of a 24-story building uh, to raise money for Gate City Community Gardens. Uh, that initiative uh, serves the Tree Streets neighborhood um, and, and is in line with the United Way's mission, and we were very happy to partner with them uh, for this fundraising effort. Um, and I'm very happy that I won't be jumping off of a building. Uh, partnership with Grow Nashua. I don't know if Justin is here tonight. Uh, we, we are going to work with uh, Grow Nashua, uh, Justin Monroe, and a lot of the folks that he works with uh, have been doing some incredible work uh, to uh, work on, uh, how, how do you say, uh, food security in Nashua. Um, and so we'll be partnering with them on a garden education program associated with a community garden effort, uh, permaculture installation at the Heritage Rail Trail. Uh, permaculture is when you plant uh, plants that uh, kind of take care of themselves to a good degree, uh, fruiting trees and vines, um, and self-seeding uh, food plants uh, that are uh, low maintenance uh, and give people the opportunity for a casual snack uh, as they're walking down the rail trail. Uh, we will look to plant the variety of uh, fruits and vegetables uh, that have a, uh, a good length of uh, fruiting season between them um, so that come late summer and into the late fall, um, people can expect to be able to grab a peach or an apple or a blackberry, something of that nature. Um, garden applications are going to be available uh, later this week. Uh, you can look out for that in our newsletter, uh, as well as 2.22. Uh, this Thursday evening, we'll be at the National Public Library for the NPL seed swap. Um, so uh, Mary Teresa is one of our longtime gardeners. She's here. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, and so we're, we're very excited for that, um, and we'll look to fill up our community garden beds and, and build our community around the project. Um, so highlighting our vibrant community, I, I want to touch on the value of our work. Uh, we talk about the things that we do. Um, it's a lot tougher to break it down to numbers, and, and my goal for this year is to kind of improve the way that we do that so we can have measurable outcomes uh, to highlight, um, you know, beyond the, the more esoteric meaning and what we do, the, the uh, measurable outcomes. and. Uh, one of the ways uh, that we, uh, we execute our mission is in highlighting not just what we do, but the vibrancy of our community. And uh, for example, uh, through our Facebook effort uh, over the past year, uh, we reached a total of 212,000 people uh, with a total of 2.1 million impressions. So those are 2.1 million opportunities for people to see uh, how uh, well things are going in downtown Nashua, how we continue to grow, and, and the importance of what comes of our relationships. So uh, that is one venue. Um, our website, uh, we've had some great success since the, the uh, overhaul of the website. Um, over this past year, uh, our Google Analytics tell us that we have a total of 57,000 individual people uh, who have visited the downtownnashua.org website. A uh, good uh, handful of them are repeat users, uh, which uh, resulted in a total of 82,000 individual visits. Now, I'll tell you, about 20,000 of those are attributed to people seeking information for the holiday stroll. Um, not this year, but the year before, uh, we hit about 12, 14,000 um, in the day, and we actually had to upgrade our servers because the website crashed. I was on the phone with... Uh, our website server company, and um, 
had to get that upgraded in the middle of the day for the holiday stroll to accommodate for the traffic. So uh, we've been getting a lot of traffic there. Um, and that is the real impact. Uh, service impact, uh, in 2017 we have over 4,000 hours. Um, and if you go by uh, the, uh, about 1,800 of those were part of the, um, uh, the downtown Nashua Parks cleanup day. Uh, but over the course of the year, we work with a lot of volunteers. Uh, if you're interested in helping out with the work that we do, uh, or even in, in uh, working on an initiative that you have in mind that we can support, uh, please feel free to contact us through the website. Um, if you look at the estimations on the, the dollar value of, um, uh, of volunteer efforts, uh, the estimates come in at about $24 to $27 uh, per volunteer hour. Um, and if you break it down uh, like that, uh, we're looking at over $100,000 in uh, value through the work that our volunteers do. And, you know, we, we talk about volunteerism, we talk about what feels good um, and, and uh, the, the way that that impacts us personally, but um, when you break it down to the, the, the tangible impact, um, it, it's really an interesting thing. Hi, Tim. Um, so economic impact, um, for the winter holiday stroll, we conducted our first uh, economic impact analysis uh, for that event through a survey. Um, and we uh, broke that down. I'm going to be getting into the, the, um, the details on this a bit further um, in March at the Planning and Economic Development Committee, so thank you for having me. Um, and the impact of that event, uh, we estimate to be at least a half a million dollars. Um, that's a very, very conservative estimate, uh, factoring in a conservative crowd estimate of 30,000 people. Uh, so we, we look at these events and, and we see how fun they are, but when we break down the numbers, uh, it means real dollars and cents too. So not only are we bringing people together, uh, but we're also stimulating the local economy. And, uh, more of those dollars, as I'm sure you know, uh, stay local um, and transcend on to um, uh, other uh, transactions later on down the line as opposed to leaving the community. Um, the real impact, perception. Uh, this is a very tough thing to gauge, but this is something that, that our work is involved with. Um, and I want you just to, this is a rhetorical question, uh, but how do you feel about downtown Nashua today? How did you feel about downtown Nashua five years ago? Um, does our communication and the work that we do, um, has that had an impact on the way that you feel about downtown? I know uh, that our downtown has a lot, uh, a lot that we can be thankful for, um, but what, we really focus on doing is getting that information out to people so that they can see that too. So volunteer recognition, uh, I'd like to recognize our 100 plus club. Uh, these are our volunteers who gave over 100 hours of their time uh, to support the Great American Downtown uh, mission and our programs. Uh, Rick Everhard, uh, Celine Blaze, Winter Blaze, uh, and Mike Watt. Uh, all were instrumental in helping uh, with the music festivals and the farmers market. Uh, and between all of those events, uh, did a, a, a yeoman's job of supporting our mission of vibrancy. So thank you to to all of them. Uh, the city of Nashua has a number of projects uh, that they've been working on, and, and we support how we can uh, that are coming this year, uh, or or uh, have just been initiated. Uh, including a, way sign, a wayfinding sign package, uh, which will be uh, going up around the city um, later on this year. Uh, photo mural project uh, with uh, artist Bob Betancourt. I don't know if you've seen some of the great uh, photo murals that are on some of the downtown storefronts. I believe there's a total of 11 or 12 of them, uh, but Bob's work is really exceptional, uh, and we're really happy that, that he allowed for us to use that. Uh, and for Alpha Graphics help uh, with running those and, and hanging them. So Steve, thank you and your team uh, for all you did to make that possible. Uh, and that was also made possible by uh, funding through the Downtown Improvement Committee. Uh, we've worked for the last two years to uh, grow the uh, holiday lighting display downtown. Uh, we have 
uh, worked with the city and with volunteers to put the light orbs in the trees up, uh, as well as uh, purchase a set of um, uh, lit garland product, which make things look really nice for the holidays. Um, and so this coming year, I believe the RFP is out or is coming out uh, to further enhance that lighting display. The city will be looking to uh, engage a, uh, a lighting design specialist. So a lot of the work that we've been doing is product selection, uh, but to really take it to the next level, uh, they will be looking to, uh, to get a lighting design specialist to potentially do some custom work and really uh, have a wow factor with our holiday lighting display for 2018. Um, it is the 25th year of the holiday stroll, which is really exciting, uh, if you can believe it. And um, so that will be a nice addition uh, to for that event, but also for the holiday season. Uh, illustration banners are coming. I don't know if you saw the work uh, for the murals up at uh, Holman Stadium, uh, the uh, first integrated baseball team murals. Um, this year, uh, artist Don Higgins, uh, who did those, uh, we'll also be uh, producing a set of illustrations uh, for banners uh, that feature a lot of the things that uh, Nashua is known for and the things that we can celebrate uh, through character illustrations. So when you go down the Broad Street Parkway, uh, come late spring, early summer, uh, there will be a set of beautiful illustrations. Um, and that is another example of a project funded by the Downtown Improvement Committee, uh, which put your uh, parking dollars to work in making our downtown a more vibrant place. Uh, the riverfront planning exercise uh, was really exciting to watch unfold. Uh, the uh, community development department um, and a lot of uh, city folks were involved with this process as well as people from the community uh, giving input on a vision for the riverfront and, um, and that uh, is being incorporated I believe into the master plan um, and will be uh, uh, important part of the progress of our downtown in, in the years ahead. Uh, pay by phone parking is also coming. James, do you know the name of the app for that? Ironically, the name of the company is Pay by Phone. <laughs> so, so for the viewers at home, the name of the company is Pay by Phone. Um, so in, I, I believe the next couple of months, uh, definitely by late summer, uh, we, we will have the opportunity uh, to pay by phone, which is uh, something that folks have been looking for. It's very uh, convenient to be able to have that app uh, punch in your parking space um, and not have to uh, think too much about it. So um, that will enhance the way that we park downtown, um, and that is on the way. Uh, confidence in our downtown. Um, the New Hampshire Business Review, uh, they, they wrote a really nice piece on us uh, on downtown Nashville last fall. Um, and one of the lines that I really appreciated was, was kind of the headline was energy, commitment, and collaboration fuel downtown Nashua's revival. Um, downtown Nashua, it, it, the, the, I hate to be cliche, but the whole it takes a village thing is, is uh, no truer than it is here in downtown Nashua. Uh, between uh, the city of Nashua, uh, various groups, um, and the work that we do, uh, there's a lot of coordination, commitment, and uh, collaboration and energy that goes into this, and it's paying off. Uh, we are seeing uh, folks who are in the business community expressing their confidence in our downtown by either establishing a business or by uh, growing their business, and, and it's a lot to be uh, you know, recognized. and. Uh, appreciate uh, because when we see businesses come here we build a critical mass and it, it uh, creates an environment where uh, the businesses that already exist here uh, can have greater success. Uh, so I'll run those down real quick. Uh, we've got Snap It's Vintage, Tangled Roots Herbal, Graffiti Paint Bar, Aerial Moon, Oddfellows Brewing Company uh, which is just opened this past weekend uh, by O'Brien's. Uh, Rohang Halal, uh, Mustak, my friend, has just opened a grocery store. Congratulations, Mustak. Uh, over at 5 Pine Street Extension, um, Joe Louise Beauty, Camaraderie Boutique, uh, Made Men Barbershop and Lounge, Fuego Bar and Grill, uh, Gaucho's Brazilian Steakhouse, uh, which if you're looking for a bite to eat after this is right next to the garage. Uh, beautiful spot, uh, City Moose Cafe and Catering. Uh, is opening at 30 Temple Street, uh, River Casino and Sports Bar opened up 
Bobel is family restaurant. Uh, Revolution is a business that is uh, going to be where Thirsty Turtle used to be. Uh, and they're working on revamping that space and making it their own now. Uh, Rambling House on Factory Street, as well as their sister business, uh, Tail Spinner Brewing Company. Uh, Suzette's Crepes is opening. It's a, a sister business as well, so to speak. Um, where Gaucho's uh, Steakhouse is. That's opening, I believe, in about a week and a half, two weeks. Milliard Brewery expanded their tasting room. Uh, why not uh, nearly uh, quintupled in size uh, and moved up the street uh, to the old Beckonings locations? Their business is, is doing very well and growing. Uh, we have new housing on the way. Uh, residences at Riverfront Landing uh, will be about 150 units. Uh, Lofts 34 uh, is on Franklin Street. And last I heard, that was uh, approaching about 200 units, Yeah, and uh, which is really exciting. They've done, done some innovation over there to expand the number of units that they're getting, which is an important part of the formula for, for increased success here. Uh, there's a project going up at Marshall Street uh, with 155 units of workforce housing. Uh, and there's an RFP out uh, for proposals for Spring Street. Uh, and I believe that there are some bids in uh, for a potential hotel to come downtown, which would be a big help. Um, the Performing Arts Center was passed. Uh, the Board of Aldermen passed that. Uh, so we have a lot of things coming um, in the months and the years ahead uh, that are going to contribute to our vibrancy. Um, and with that, uh, we'll get into questions. We have about uh, 10, 15 minutes, and I'm, I'm happy to hear from you. So who has a question? Don't be shy. Alderman Dowd. Are we doing anything special for the stroll for the 25th anniversary? In the back, they told me I have to repeat the question. So, um, <laughs> so uh, yes, uh, we are going to be working uh, this past year. Uh, we worked to add daytime activity to that event, which was a big success. We had Santa's Village, uh, which allowed for parents uh, with younger kids to come out during the daytime before bedtime. Uh, we will look to continue that. Uh, we are going to work to uh, enhance the event in other ways. What that will take shape as, uh, we're, we're still developing those ideas and very open to suggestions on that if, if folks um, uh, have some input. Uh, we'd be glad to hear from you. Yes, sir. Are you going to add, are you going to try to expand the rail trail to maybe Hudson? That's a good, that's, that's a, that's, that's a great question. That was not on my list of things that are coming, uh, but that is coming. Um, the city has been, is it the TAP grant? Uh, so t transportation alternative program, uh, grant from the, uh, the federal uh, government. Uh, the Community Development Department, I believe, has been awarded a grant uh, which will extend the rail trail to the other side of Main Street, um, w which is already in process. So, so your wish is coming true. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we have a wealth of trails, uh, and, and community development and City Hall have been doing a, uh, a great job of, of kind of hunting down funds to expand and kind of complete that between the Riverwalk, the rail trail, um, and connections with Mine Falls Park. Uh, they, they've been going all cylinders, and uh, great question. Yes? Uh, so Suzette's Crepes, um, the uh, Gaucho's uh, Brazilian Steakhouse has a very innovative business model. They have a business up in Manchester um, and have just moved this uh, to, to Nashua to add a new location. Um, the way that uh, their model works, uh, during the, the uh, breakfast and lunch time, um, they operate as Suzette's Crepes. And in the evening for the dinner crowd, uh, they operate as uh, Gaucho's uh, Brazilian Steakhouse. So. Uh, and Gaucho's is going to be, it is located, it is now open. Uh, Gaucho's is located next to the Elm Street garage. Um, so so, um, um, so opposite the garage from City Hall from where we are. Did I see a hand? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Alderman Clee uh, has, has said she really enjoyed the uh, chocolate stroll and had the opportunity to check out a lot of shops. 
um, that uh, she hadn't before. And, and that, that's part of the idea, right? So we have these events. Uh, we give people the opportunity to familiarize themselves with a lot of the great shops and businesses that we have downtown. And um, so I'm glad you, you recognize that. that. That's part of the value. The other part is, is chocolate. Yes, so a shout out to Nashua Coin. Lots of wonderful things in there. Um, any other questions? Yes. Um, is Bobolo's open yet? I don't know if Bobolo's open yet. Uh, so she, she, she asked if Bobolo's has opened yet. Um, it is up uh, just, just off the highway, I believe, on Simon Street. Um, and so uh, your friend wants to be the first person in Bobolo's, right? Yeah, see, I remember. Um, she takes her commitment seriously. I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I haven't had a chance. There, uh, it, no, that's quite, that's quite fine. So be on the lookout for that. Um, they, they do have a Facebook page, um, and, and I think that they'll probably post up there. Um, uh, questions? Yes? Money, she, she has said Money Magazine has voted Nashua uh, the best place to live in New Hampshire. The best city. The best city to live in New Hampshire. The best city. And, and in their That is very cool. Um, so, so don't don't hate me if I get this wrong. Is it is it Nancy? Elaine, Elaine pardon me. Okay. Don't hate me. So, so what Elaine has just said. Uh, Elaine serves on the Nashua International Sculpture Symposium Committee. Um, we were number one in New Hampshire. Let's give let's give her a big round of applause. Um, uh, the uh, Money Magazine has designated us number one in New Hampshire and number 16 in the nation. Does that sound about right? Yeah. And uh, that's a lot to be thankful for. What we also have to be thankful for is the Nashua International Sculpture Symposium. Um, the uh, Sculpture Symposium has over the past, uh, what is it, 12 years now? 11th year? And ov over 30 sculptures throughout the city, um, and they're really tremendous. Um, if you uh, go to our website, um, there you can navigate along to a interactive map that GIS has put together um, and find those uh, sculptures and, and where you can check them out, as well as some of the murals that Positive Street Art and City Arts Nashua and others have produced. Um, the photo, um, I, I we. we they, they contacted uh, Great American Downtown, and I sent them maybe a dozen photos. And that photo was taken by Ken Skews, um, and the it's Tony Jimenez is the artist who who did the piece, right? No, no, I'm the artist. She's she's on a rampage. And did you say, so there's, uh, there's three sculptures at Lovewell Pond. Did you say that the, uh, the opening uh, ceremony starts May 10th? And, and is it at the Nashua Airport again this year? See, I, see, I know. I got my finger on the pulse. <laughs> it's a great event. Yeah.
Lovely. Fantastic. So thank you so much. And, and uh, nashrasculturesymposium.org, is that correct? Yeah, so if you, you can go to nashrasculturesymposium.org and check that out uh, and, and get the info on their opening ceremony. Uh, the artist will be at Make It Labs this year, is that correct? See, I know. And so, so the artists will be at Make It Labs uh, doing their work. Uh, Make It Labs is a wonderful maker space uh, over uh, uh, on Crown Street. Um, and so, yeah, and, and it's in the old Armstrong cabinetry place. And so, so you can stop by, you can see them at work and visit them. Uh, you can also host them for dinner, I believe. C contact through the website. Um, And are you still, are you still looking for host families? So the Sculpture Symposium is still looking for host families. So if you'd like to get involved with that project, um, check them out, nashosculturesymposium.org. You're welcome. Um, I, I have time for about two more questions. Yes, Alderman Lopez. See, it's very rare that I get trolled in real life. Uh, so, so Alderman Lopez has graciously asked me how many times I'll be in a dunk tank this year. Uh, just as many as you, Tom. And, and so uh, we, we did a, a wonderful dunk tank uh, event at the farmer's market, uh, thanks to Tom uh, demanding that I be in a dunk tank. Um, and uh, the fire department kindly came and, and filled up the dunk tank uh, from the the fire truck and that water is a it's, it's not quite potable water So we might need different water, but uh, be on the lookout subscribe to the newsletter So you can have the first opportunity to find out when Tom will be in a dunk tank <laughs> All right, uh, what one I could probably do one or two any more questions Yes so our total operating budget, uh, we, we just approved it. I want to say it's in the ballpark of about $230,000. Uh, the total operating in, in 2017, uh, I want to say it was closer to 225. dollars uh, $35,000. So it's, it's about 15%. Um, over the years, uh, it, it uh, has been as high as uh, Forty percent. Um, so, with the growth in our programs, uh, we've been able to do a good bit uh, to reduce that amount. Um, now, the Great American Downtown um, uh, has had support from the city uh, going back into the early 2000s, and as we continue to grow, uh, we, we've been able to uh, uh, reduce the, the proportion, which has been really good, uh, significant, uh, significantly improved return on investment, so to speak. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Yes. So uh, on your slip, um, in there, we, we don't have this set concretely yet, but I want people to keep it in mind and look out for it. Um, we conducted a feasibility study with the National Regional Planning Commission to determine uh, if there was a market demand for a winter farmer's market. Uh, we've been working with economic development um, and, uh, and City Hall to uh, try and find a way that we can accommodate a winter market this year and I'm hoping that uh, by the end of July uh, we'll, we'll have settled on a concrete solution on, on where that will be on, and what the model will look like. Thank you. All right, I could do one more. I keep saying that, but... All right, so, so I have one more slide and I do this every year. It's terrible. It's an awful joke, but it makes me laugh. Thank you. Uh, so, so thank you so much uh, for coming out tonight. Um, uh, thank you to the aldermen who came tonight, uh, to our board of directors, all of our volunteers, and, and folks who support Vibrancy in downtown. Uh, we have uh, the uh, Mayor's State of the City coming up at 7 o'clock, so if you want to uh, skip out and, and come back or hang around for that, um, it, it's a really great presentation and an opportunity to learn about what, what's coming up uh, citywide. Um, and again, thank you guys so much for all you do to support our work. Uh, without you, we, we really couldn't uh, have the success that we have had. So thank you. Give yourselves a big round of applause.